Hello, this is a book review for a the first book of this series, which I am rereading for the first time in many years, um, The Magic of Recluse. I've read all of these books probably at least once. I've read this one twice, so this would be the third time I've read it. Um, Magic of Recluse by Ellie Modsit, who just ha Jr., who happens to be my my favorite author. Uh, there is no blurb on the back, so what is this fantasy book about? If I guess if I had to, if I had to make up a my own blurb, um, I would say the island of Recluse has stood isolated and stalwart against the turmoils of other lands for many years, but it has a price. And young Lyris, uh, a young man in this coming-of-age tale, must learn uh, the payment of this price. As he is a discontented youth, and, and Recluse is not an island for those who are not at peace, both body and mind. He risks exile from the island, along with other uh, people who do not fit in, <laughs> and you get to learn whether or not will he become a craftsman, a husband, uh, will he learn any of this, uh, the magic of order, or will he fall into the seductive and powerful tendrils of the white wizards, the chaos masters, who roam the continent of Kandor. That would probably be something like my blurb. So it is a coming-of-age tale, and uh, but it, I wouldn't say that it's um, it, I wouldn't say it's sort of cliche in the sense that uh, the young man doesn't necessarily go through uh, like a like a wizard school. He doesn't necessarily get apprenticed by a wizard. Um, like uh, it's kind of funny. He has kind of like a duality. A, a, a duality in this uh, as what he kind of does for his day job and kind of like where his like purpose and his own sort of uh, character soul is taking him and these are sort of at odds as sort of somebody who is sort of in a background versus someone who's sort of out in the front and so I've always really liked uh, Mode Sit's understated characters because these are not heroes these are people who end up transitioning into heroes if the events call for it. Like so some of his books are are rather understated. There is no necessarily epic finish. Um, this one is the first book of this series so there is a conflict which Lyris does resolve as um, as a as a young man but you know how is he gonna do it is like kind of like the different story. And um, I was kind of looking at it through. It's kind of funny. Um, the settings aren't actually very well described in this book. Um, for some reason, in my memory, when I had, when I had read the book before, I remembered like the the great settings and everything like that. But actually, apparently, it was just my imagination because, uh, of course, what Modset does is like you know the author's trick. He kind of lays out a framework, a skeleton framework, and lets the person fill in the details of something like you know. What's a a good uh, farm village with basically sheep is going to look like versus like a wheat village? What's that going to look like versus like what's a hamlet that you know a a forest uh, a logger's hut? What's that going to what's that going to be? What's the surroundings if the hillside is filled out with with many trees to which the logger can cut his wood? So. The settings really have like really uh, differentiated sort of skeleton frameworks where the setting is not very well described, um, but I think that it does allow for the, for the reader to kind of use his imagination and put something in that. Um, looking through the book is an amazingly heavy in dialogue. It's written in first person, and you really do get to be engaged with the character like you get to see like um, some of the situations that he's dealing with and like you know it doesn't actually really reminisce on his thoughts as a narrative um, 
basically just sort of get his sensibilities so that you could kind of predict that he'd rather like stay home today versus go fight a battle or something like that or he'd rather you know really do something about you know this guy that's upsetting him rather than be passive aggressive and it's kind of an interesting way that he's able to do that with just dialogue and like uh, this is mostly a, a character study sort of book um, and it also provides sort of the framework for the bigger scope one of the major uh, the scope of the stories like the universe because the uh, saga of recluse is not actually about characters at all it's actually sort of about this universe and Mozart doesn't really panhandle the characters too much you, I don't he's not in the habit of killing off like his main characters or anything like that but because the story is about the world rather than necessarily the character um, it means that you know your character can be in danger and it is sort of interesting in the sense that you are basically put into a character study but with the you that's and that's how you learn about the world is from like one person's perspective is how you end up learning about the world and uh, but the major I would think that's the major uh, down point of the magic of recluse would be that um, uh, the books are not written chronologically like they jump around uh, in what time of the universe is so there'll be one that was like way early at the beginning of sort of the duality between order and chaos magic and you'll get one like way over where recluse is just a brand new nation island you know and then you get one that's where recluse is like the set up sort of established island such as like when this book was written like recluse is an established nation and also another thing, interesting thing about the book is that it lays out a very sort of limited description of the magical system in Recluse, but actually it has some pretty interesting connections with basically how nations deal with foreign policy issues with magic, which is not really your typical fantasy book. Is is that you know, and especially towards the end of the book, you sort of learn why recluse you know threatens exile to people who are discontented you know like not only you know is it like possibly a way to like you know retain peace but it could actually have other results to which these these order masters on the island basically predict just basically on you know uh you know human human course of action human course of events the psychology the psychological element um, I'm really, really excited to reread the series. Um, the writing is not the best writing. Mozart's an average author. I would say that the he's a little bit better than average. And um, one thing that's really nice about Mozart is that he's very prolific. So if you really want to get into an author's work and you don't want to have to wait for like the next book that's going to be, you know, thirty million years away. Uh, you know, Mozart can can uh, put out for you, and like you know, of course, he's been writing for already like twenty, thirty years, and so there you can read a lot of the history work. And actually, I'm going to a lot of used bookstores to pick up the rest of the saga because when I first read it, I didn't have any money, and I read it through the library, you know, system. So uh, going to some used bookstores, I'm getting it. Uh, like I said, the the books do jump around a lot. Um, if you're going to read the series, and so that would be the only uh, only downer. Um, it's not a uh, an epic tale by any means. It's really just a story of basically a discontented youth and his coming of age story. It does set up some really interesting framework for the universe at large. Um, you do get to meet uh, one of the characters that is a prominent character in one of the other books, but he's sort of a cameo appearance in this book. Um, and since this is the first book written, like, you know, at the time, like, that wasn't that book, those books weren't even written. Um, but, uh, let's see here. So, the premise is really kind of about Recluse, really, more the so than uh, the character Lyris, while the pot, plot really does follow Lyris' first person view. So, it's kind of interesting that the premise and the plot kind of 
are two different things. Like they have actual separation. Usually the, the premise is set up, the plot sort of just fulfills and fills in the premise, you know, and you get to see what's going to happen. But this one kind of retains a certain duality between like the idea of the of the of the universe and actually your simple just one person perspective as you follow along in the universe. Um, there is like uh, you know one of my complaints about my recent book, the the American Gods, is that there's no tension between you know what would you do in that situation. Well, since it's written in first person view, and uh, Lyris comes up a lot with like you know decisions about you know uh, love, uh, career, uh, pursuit, you do get kind of like you know the tensions of you know what would I do in that situation? Would I go with a beautiful girl or would I go save the day? You know I'm you know kind of at odds you know personally um so it's kind of a it, it's a it's about 500 pages it's decent um i, I think it's a very easy read um uh Mozart is not the greatest writer but yet he's my favorite author um mostly because i think that he's able to do this interesting thing between first and third person when he writes in third person He's able to sort of get the um, the feelings of a first person perspective. When he writes first person for other books, you know the other books I've read, first person you really get kind of a larger scope as if you're seeing kind of a third person perspective. And so it took me a lot of lot of years to figure out that um, like that this sort of way that he does perspectives between like first person writing and third person writing is really sort of what I like about his his uh, line but you know it could be that my recall is a little bit off because like I'm wondering if all of these books are written in the first person I don't know um, anyway so for anybody who wants a, a fantasy stories that really centers on on a character um, that doesn't have a lot of there's no elves there's no dwarves there's no dragons there's not that kind of thing there's the magical system that is between order and chaos and interesting kind of connotations of whether or not um, the people who follow those those different values are are good or evil and um, so so yeah it's not it's not strictly it's not cliche magic at all and uh, I really like the book. I'm really excited to reread it. I would rate it a 10 just because on the excitement that I'm, I'm rereading it. I think that this book would probably be a 6 borderline 7 because I do like it. It's like for most people I think it would be a 6. For me it would be like an 8 because I just really like the story. Um, but because it's so heavily on dialogue and just the just a little reliance on dialogue kind of just takes it down a couple notches because not everybody just wants to read a story first person story on dialogue so it's probably like a six and a half for most people I would say um, I really do like it I would rate it an eight uh, but yeah so I uh, don't know what else to say about it other than uh, the next books are Towers of Sunset which I am currently reading and uh, I'm excited to, to reread the books. So thanks for watching, and I uh, hope to see you again.